Welcome to the International Internship University, the world's first virtual university, which is concocted by the visionary Piyush Pandit. The vision of Piyush Pandit is to take education to students and not students to education for the better is just one day, no child he has worked 24 by 7 and the dream came into reality in the form of international internship university through his concerted efforts piyush pundit has made the education so facile through iiu that the learner from any corner of the world from any university or college can avail it as per their needs and comfort at a very nominal rate. International Internship University is building a better and brighter future for all young learners and is committed to providing quality, skill-based, affordable, accessible and location-independent education to all the young learners of the globe by providing internship opportunities. International Internship University is metamorphosing the conventional education system by cutting down the additional costs and providing access to more than 1,000 plus courses and internships to their e-learners across 195 countries and six continents throughout the year with over 150 virtual offices around the world. IIU has been accredited and affiliated with the World Education Organization WEO, and International Accreditation Organization IAO, and collaborated with all the world's top universities and educational institutions through the platform of MOOC, Massive Open Online Courses, with the aim of promoting internships and making modern education easy, accessible and affordable. IIU provides honorary degree, master's degree, graduate degree, certificate and diploma courses, professional education, customized programs, free courses, sustainable development goals courses, non-academic courses, blockchain technology learning lab and many more. The entire curriculum of the IIU is skill based on the ethos of high academics with the help of MOOC technology. Our country directors are constantly bonding with the corporate sector worldwide, whether it's MNCs or international job providers. This is done not only to benefit the students of that particular country, but also to benefit the schools or colleges which are affiliated to us. All the students and colleges will be given the support like online training, virtual knowledge exchange, internship opportunities worldwide, placement assistance. IIU is committed to providing stress-free education with internship and entrepreneurship opportunities without any financial burden on the learners and their family members. International Internship University, after its inception in Australia, India has become the main hub of its operations. Mr. Piyush Pandit, co-founder and COO of IIU, India, and chairman of Swarna Bharat Parivar. Piyush Pandit concocted the world's first internship university, the International Internship University. The world's first virtual university that emplace internships as preeminent precedents. Piyush Pandit had a dream to provide idea of free education to learners across the world from the year 2017. After two years of continuous hard work and efforts, the research about the establishment of International Internship University has been completed in the year 2019. In 2020, IIU received the Certificate of Grant Innovation Patent, Australia under the Patent Act 1990. Innovation Patent Certification from WIPO Proof, ISO Certified 9001, 2005 and IAO Accredited. International Internship University is duly registered in 2021 by Certificate, Section 60. Further, IIU has been registered in India and USA. International Internship University has formed various councils to address specific issues faced by students, youths, women, and in the field of education. International Student Development Council Objective of this council is to help, guide, 
and motivate the students. The council is made to ensure that the voice of the students is not suppressed. Building a sense of community is the essence of the International Student Development Council. International Youth Development Council. Improving the lives of children and adolescents by meeting their basic physical, developmental, and social needs and by helping them to build the competencies needed to become successful adults. IIU Women Entrepreneurs Council recognizes the incredible skills possessed by a woman, respects their self-worth, and intertwines it with entrepreneurial skills to give a woman the power to create magic, magniloquence, and money with her skill sets. IIU Women Entrepreneurs Council is giving an opportunity to every woman on this globe to witness the uncultivated talents within her to be the successful women entrepreneur. International Council for Educators recognizes the contribution of educators all over the world in the field of education and encourages them to be a part of it and to change the lives of many more by imparting quality education and spreading knowledge worldwide. IIU is for everyone. Whatever you covet to be, whatever you crave to do, whatever you yearn to study, without any financial stress. Right. Um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Uh, hello. Can everybody hear me? It's a pleasure meeting us once again. Yes. Thank oh, you very thank much. You. Yes, yes, we do. All right. Thank you. I'm asking because I know my uh, internet connectivity today is a bit bad. So hence, I'm presenting with my phone, not my laptop, because the laptop is very weak. But apart from that, thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Uh, this is International Internship University, uh, which is the world's first internship-based visual university, building a better and brighter future for all young learners and is committed to provide quality, accessible, affordable, skills-based, and location-independent education to learners across the world. IIU is metamorphosizing the conventional education system by cutting down the additional costs and providing access to more than 1,000 plus courses and internships to their e-learners across the globe with the team of high caliber and experienced global educators. IIU has been accredited and affiliated with the World Education Organization, shortened WEO, and International Accreditation Organization, IAO, and collaborated with all the world's top universities and educational institutions through the platform of massive open learning courses. IIU provides various certificates and diploma courses, including graduation, post-graduation diploma, post-graduation courses, and honorary doctorate, etc. IIU has received many accreditations as per international standards for its innovation, vision, creative ideas, research, and white paper publication. There is always that one person who has the vision, the thought, the idea behind a successful venture and organization. And if we talk about the men behind the success of IIU, it's none other than our beloved co-founder of IIU, Mr. Priyush Pandit. A committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate ed educationist from the last two decades, providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds, possessing excellent administrative, verbal communication, and written skills. He is a next-gen speaker and passionate writer. The versatile Peyush Pandit is the founder of Swana, Pandit a uh, Pariva and chairman of a uh, page group. He uh, concocted the world's first visual internship university during a pandemic, the International Internship University, the IIU. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to say IIU is the change. IIU brings the change, and IIU is the revolution. 
I am Malibisi Ishmael Silo, a proud member of IIU and the educational ambassador of IIU South Africa under the leadership of Prof. Dr. Cham, uh, General Avoria Azuolo Charles, the Africa Head uh, Country Director from Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our event today. And in our event today, we'll be focusing on the topic a name how to prepare students to be globally competent. We know that we are from different uh, countries, we are different places, and our curriculum in those countries differs as such. So now it's high time whereby we need to learn how best we can be able to promote and prepare the students who will be globally competent so that they can be able to compete with other students globally or from any other uh, country you can think of. You should. Uh, not limit themselves uh, as far as the content of that particular country is concerned, but uh, explore your wins so that they can be able to get the content that other countries are doing. So ladies and gentlemen, today I believe our event is not going to prolong and uh, will be done in about an hour or so. So now colleagues, uh, allow me to welcome our speakers. Our speakers are going to be as follows. We are going to have a uh, Mr. David Magarane. It will be followed by Maborele Kalakala, and will be followed by Mukudu Machaba, followed by Debo Homlepo, Tabiso Matiba, and last but not least will be Sophia Matapu. If I am to say, these are one uh, the most prominent speakers I know, uh, and I believe that this event will be a great success. So, Mr. Magarana, I hope you're ready. Uh, the stage is yours and the mic is yours. Take us through. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, uh, Solo. <clears throat> good afternoon to uh, everybody from, I just decided to, to put my that people should see uh, who they're talking to. They should not only hear uh, the voice. Uh, good afternoon to all the colleagues from all over the, the globe. <laughs> I, I cannot mention all the countries that you are from, but I'm delighted to be part of uh, this uh, seminar uh, today. I am Nastudela David Marani, the second manager of Mount Queen. Uh, we have decided to name our second Mount Queen High Tech Circuit. Uh, the topic, as uh, you said, uh, Mr. Solo, it says how to prepare our students to be globally competent. Uh, let me say, in, in, in our case, a student is somebody who's at the, at the university. So we, I will, I'll be talking about learners <laughs> from time to time. So uh, it all started with, in our circuit, uh, Mongqing. Okay, Mongqing is a, an area in Limpopo. And uh, according to the demarcation of the Department of Education, it is in Limpopo under Capricorn South District, under Mongqing. Uh, Mongqing is an area uh, where you find the University of Limpopo, where you find the two Zen Christian uh, churches. That is where Mongqing is. In fact, the schools that are managing are the schools that belong to the two big churches, uh, four of the schools uh, also surrounding, I mean, the schools in Mongqing are surrounding the University of, of Limpopo. Uh, we in Mongqing, now, as I'm speaking, before I go back, let me start from, from what we are, we are doing now. Is that after the, uh, after the coronavirus hit us, we are a circuit that has small schools that are highly populated, that are overcrowded. So with this thing of 20 is to one, the social distancing, where they said learners uh, can only be 20 in a class. So we find that uh, in some of our schools, learners were taking about two weeks without coming to school because of the rotational model, because there are too many learners in very small uh, schools or very small infrastructure. So that made us realize that our learners are going to lose a lot that is what you call loss of learning. Learners are going to lose a lot because they stay at home. And teachers were also complaining that when these learners come back from the two weeks, 
uh, after they've been away, we start from the beginning all, all along. So we then approached the University of Limpopo. Uh, there is an e-learning center there to say, how do you, because we knew that the University of Limpopo learners were all students, sorry, this time students were all at home. So we wanted to ask them, how do you reach your students when they're at home? They showed us different uh, ways, the Google Classroom, the Blackboard, the Kahoot, the Zappa, uh, the Quizzes, and all other uh, uh, platforms that they use to reach learners. But then I fell in love with this one called uh, Kahoot and of course the, the Google Classroom. So we then even conducted workshops uh, with our teachers to make sure that they reach our learners uh, when they're at home. So indeed that happened and our learners now in the second are writing online tests. Even when they were at home, we were, we were sending them links so that they, they, they write tests and when they're at home. But then let me come to this or our learners. How do we prepare them? Now that they're back in the school, uh, we make sure that these learners from grade R up to grade 12, they are required to bring their cell phones uh, to the school so that we install these apps for them. And then we teach them how to uh, use these cell phones, these gadgets, the laptops, the smart boards to uh, write online tests. But that does not only end there. As long as you expose these learners, uh, we have what, what you call goal 20 in the uh, in South Africa's uh, National Development Plan, go, uh, Action Plan 2024. Goal 20 says we must uh, make learners access social uh, media uh, for things like computers and other things. As long as these learners now access these gadgets, then they obviously know how to do things online. Obviously, uh, when they are aimed to apply for jobs, when they are apply for space, when they are writing tests, then they are now getting to, to be online. And I could see that uh, learners enjoy uh, the gadgets that the learners are using. They enjoy using the gadgets. So uh, that in itself has, has made me realize that uh, we, must, we must, keep on, must keep on doing this. Uh, the other thing that I also want to emphasize is that uh, even if uh, on a particular day, they're supposed to write online tests, online tests that they are writing, that they write them at school, but as a second, we have 30 schools. So one school will set a test for a particular uh, uh, Thursday. We, we will issue a timetable that on this day, they will write life skills for grade one or grade R. All the grade R learners will write a test that has been set by one school in our second, just like that every Thursday. So it would be grade one writing life skills, grade one uh, writing numeracy, grade two writing English, grade three writing other things, grade four, five up to grade 12. One school will be uh, given a task to set for the whole second in a rotational manner like that. And if on a particular Thursday, learners don't write, you, you, you can see that there is a, a little bit of a, a war because learner will, the learners will be saying, are we, not, are we not writing? Because they are now getting used to, to, to this uh, online thing. The, the pathetic thing is that now when you see the other schools from other areas, uh, the, they are closing, because now learners are flocking into uh, the mountain area where they are seeing that learners are now starting to, to get used to gadgets. Because when they get home, they start to break to others that today we were answering four uh, questions using our cell phones. Others don't know how they did it, but they will be showing them that this is how we did it. So in this way, even when uh, our learners are supposed to write uh, international tests, they can even uh, maybe enroll with the uh, international internship university by just going online and don't have to uh, to, to, uh, to register only in the universities in, in South Africa. So we can say that our learners are, are, are becoming uh, or are uh, globally uh, competent because they know this thing of online and online does not only have, does not have uh, meters or kilometers. It goes beyond, I don't know, it's just uh, unlimited. You cannot say, uh, this university is too far from me, or this school is too far from me, or the learner who's setting a test for our first day Kahoot is far from us. As long as the test is put, uh, there is a link given to you, then you can write. So our learners up to so far, they know 
uh, they are they are very very equally competent. They they can even tell you what is happening in Ukraine in Russia because we, we sometimes just give them smaller than a test, and then you you find them uh, arguing that no you don't understand this is what is happening. Then they start to understand uh, what is the impact, why is the price of petrol going up? We are far away from Ukraine, we are far far away from Russia, but the learners now we give them some smaller than a task to tell us why is the price of oil or the price of petrol uh, going up. Uh, I don't know whether I've exhausted my 10 minutes. You, see, you know, Mr. Sulu, I can, <laughs> I can speak for, uh, for a long time. Uh, lastly, let me say uh, that our uh, learners, through the assistance of teachers, and now, of course, recently, through the help of the educator assistant, we have also trained our educator assistant so that uh, they also get uh, interact with uh, with our learners so so that we bring this online thing it becomes more exciting because our uh, educator assistants are this very very young they are between 18 and 35 so they are more or less the peers of our our kids in the school so they're able to interact with them even even if our uh, veteran educators are not uh, able to interact these young ones the young educator assistants that are in there we have from 8 to 15 in each and every school uh, thanks to the president so that we have we are able to train them to also make sure that they, they engage uh, engage our learners on a daily basis because uh, we write weekly tests as a second but the schools are encouraged to write on a weekly basis so thank you very much mr solo thank you very wow. much a pleasure salom you made a mistake for not introducing me you called my name you didn't want me to talk you have to silence me it's wrong I need to bring that up. I need to let us know what the topic is all about. I need to expose the topic so that everybody will know what to do. What to do. Eh? So you need to yes. uh, oh. that. Thank yes. you very much yes. for the opportunity given to us. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, Excellency. We appreciate International Internship University for initiating this great and noble topic, preparing students to be globally competent. Globally competent are the skills, the values, and behavior, behavior that prepare young people to strive in a more diverse, interconnected world. Young people are people that are young at mind, who energetic and who are energetic and must be engaged in citizens, who are collaboratively problem solver and must be culturally competent. To be culturally competent, you must be aware of the differences between cultures and must be critical and creative thinkers. Finally, mm -hmm. must operate at a local, must, must operate at a professional and international and international content. There are seven globally competent. One, intelligent humility. Two, appreciative of culture. Three, evaluation of information. Four, must have cross-cultural communication skills. Five, must be perspective thinking, taking skills. Six, must be technological literacy. Must also have divergent thinking. All teachers should be globally competent. How to prepare students for globalized world, which is economic. One, expose students to different cultures. Two, related news. Related news should be exposed to students and reviewed and globally education as a skill forum. Three, stress the importance of the international collaboration. They should interact with different culture in business and learn it. They should focus on skills as well as qualification. Note, students must, be, must practice skills developed in the classroom and apply their learning to real world topics. They are seeking for global competence. One, this is the two keys used by productive and involved citizenry uses to meet the problems and opportunity of the world. 
notes in the curriculum, global competence challenges students to investigate the world by considering variety of perspective and communicate idea and take meaningful action. Note, a globally focused curriculum engages students in their own learning and motivate them to strive for knowledge and understanding. A new generation of students require different skills from the generation that come before. More than ever before, individual action reach around the globe. For globally competent, integrate knowledge of the world and the skill of application with disposition to think and behave productively. Note, global competence is not restricted to knowing about other cultures or other perspectives. In addition to knowledge of the world, a globally competent citizen exhibits the following habits like critical thinking, rational optimism, optim optimism innovation, empathy, awareness of the, of the influences of culture on individual behavior and what is there. I'm sorry, Prof. Charles, you got uh, kicked out by the system. Are you back? Thank you very much. Add all that language, knowledge, and thinking skill, as well as shared knowledge and cultural understanding will be needed by government, business, and cultural institutions, giving the opportunity to solve the world's problem cooperatively. While students are told, and prepared to approach problems from multiple perspectives and to strive in a global future as and to strive in a global future as specified in a globally focused curriculum. Working with and building relationships with people who have different background, add meaning, depth, and joy to your life. Skills. There are four skills of globally competent students investigates the world beyond their immediate environment by doing research, recognize perspective of others and their own, communicate ideas effectively with a vast audience. By so doing, you are bridging barriers. Four, take action to improve condition as well as a player in the world. A strategies that promote global competence Support the world language fluency. Take a big view. Demonstrate intercultural competence. Diversity of idea. Support traveling. Make room for projects. Global to go. Students need to be investigating, doing research throughout their academic career. E.g., ending hunger and poverty, clean water and sanitation, taking climate action, building smart cities, Exploring space. These are global issues, but nearly all can be explored locally. On the above, what does poverty look like in my town? How can I reduce hunger when I live? But does my solution have merit for impoverished community around the world? City as classroom. To be globally competent, we have to develop the following skills, learning skills, literacy skills, and life skills. Learning skills are known as four C's. One, critical thinking. Two, communication. Three, collaboration. And four, creativity. Literacy skills are being literate in the following, information, in media, in technology, and literacy. Life skills are being flexible, initiative, Sociable, productive, and good. 21st century skill refer to the knowledge and life skill, career skill, habit, and traits that are critically important to students' success in today's perspective, particularly as students move to, on to college, the, for, the workforce, and adult life. With what I've said so far, I've given the idea 
what the uh, speakers will follow so as to have a successful uh, talk today. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Lovely. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. And that was again Prof. Dr. Chap, General Aporia uh, Uzuolo Charles, which is who is the head of uh, or the Africa head, right? And he's from Nigeria. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, well said, well said. And prior to that, um, it was uh, Mr. Maharani, who's a, a former teacher, who is a former principal, and who is currently the second manager in Manguin Circuit in Limpopo, South Africa. And one thing that I actually love about Mr. Maharani is that he's one of the most flexible men ever that I've ever seen. Um, why am I saying this? Because he's in leadership, but um, he's, he doesn't have that sense of pride whereby where, wherever he goes, he will, he will uh, want to be treated like a second manager. So when he goes to sports, he will be wearing sports wear. When he goes to meeting, he will uh, uh, check the kind of the meeting he will wear accordingly and he will participate when he gets there. And he, uh, what he's doing is definitely driving uh, uh, South Africa forward. And thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Maragani. And secondly, like I said, we are supposed to have um, Miss Likala Gala, uh, but unfortunately, due to time, I mean, due to network connectivity, I'm not sure if uh, Miss Mabore will be able to, to take us through. And um, Mabore is uh, also a teacher in Limpopo, South Africa. He's the national teaching award winner. He's a Microsoft innovator uh, expert since 2014 to 2020. He's a Bellametric ICT Foundation trainer, amongst others. So, Miss Mabora, are you are you in a good position to to can take us through? Yes, Law. If you only <clears throat> can allow me to share content, because it says um, only the host can share in this meeting. Oh, I'm sorry for that. It's fine. You can just share the content, and we'll sort that out. All right. Good afternoon, um, colleagues. My name is Maburili Kalakala. I'm not sure if you can see what I'm sharing. Can you? Colleagues, can you see what I'm sharing? Uh, no, we can see it now. You can't see. Oh, yeah, we okay, can, we can see you, you not allow but we can see. Oh, yes. You can yes. see me, yeah. but you cannot you can see share what now. I'm sharing. Yes, you okay. can share again. Now you are the co-host. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks. So I'll be very brief. I'm not going to say a lot of things because I had issues with my network. So what I wanted to share was uh, the kind of presentations that I prepare for my learners. So I could not connect on my laptop and I just found one from uh, my device and this is what I'm gonna share. And it's an old presentation. So uh, as a digital teacher, I so much uh, like putting my things on one PowerPoint. My information will be on one PowerPoint so that when I go to class, I don't need to run around looking for this and that to write uh, with a marker on the whiteboard or anything. So everything will be there on one place. So this is what I do in my classroom. I'll have the learning objectives written clearly so that I can uh, revisit them at the end of the lesson. And we check with the learners if they have mastered each objective. If not, then I know that I'll have to repeat that next time or in the next lesson. So my introductory slides normally starts with um, a game, a play, where learners will stand up and um, I animate this. Then the information will come one one and uh, as it appears, like the first question says, the place value of four in 347 is 40. If that is true, learners who feel is true will stand up. Those who feel is not will get seated. 
then um, I can see learners who are not sure, who are not working, who don't understand what place value means, the difference between place value and number. Hey, Mabura, are you still here? I think she got kicked out, and uh, my apologies for that. Okay, the network. Yes, Um. yeah, she's having some network challenges, and I don't know if she'll be able to, to come back anytime. Okay, in the meantime, I think, uh, let me continue to the uh, next speaker. Uh, Madam Mukudu, are you are you in a good space to to can take us through? She's also still committed uh, at the department, so I'm not sure if she should be able to take us through. Uh, Madam Mukudu, uh, Mukudu Machaba, are you are you in a good space? Okay, it's fine. Um, I will share her presentation later. She sent me the presentation so that I can share with you because um, she, where she is, okay. everything was. Okay. Hello, program director. Yes, sir. how are you? Yes, I'm okay. Now, how are you? I'm Mr. Letualo from Capricorn South District. I am with um, Madam Machaba. She's still busy right now. Um, in five minutes, she will be back and she will address what you want here to address. Okay, thank you. Very lovely. Oh, um, sorry, she is saying you can take over her presentation. You, right, you are having no her presentation. Am, am I right? Oh, yes, yes, I'm having the presentation. Yes, uh, she's requesting right. that you take over her presentation. Okay, no problem. Right. Oh, okay, uh, thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, colleagues, to save time, let me take you through Mukudu Machaba's presentation, and then I believe we'll be done shortly. The presentation is on the topic, how to prepare students to be globally competent. And uh, Mukudu Machaba, uh, she's a global teacher prize 2020. Uh, other colleagues, can we please mute our mics? She's a, a global teacher prize 2020 finalist. And she's a Microsoft Innovative Educator expert. Uh, Ed, can you please uh, help me to, to mute the other participants who are not uh, in the podium at the moment? Okay, she's a Microsoft Innovator Expert Trainer Fellow and uh, she's a National Teaching Awards Award winner 2018 in the uh, category of excellence in primary school teaching. She's a CPSI special, a ministerial award winner 2016. She's inspiring 50 women in tech 2017. She's a Vaki Foundation ambassador. She's a ISPA super teacher award ambassador. And last but not least, she's a Jewel uh, Fellowship ambassador. And that is Mukuru Machaba. So uh, the quote by Greg Map says, if you can film an idea in your mind, follow that film idea, short for short, scene for scene, and that idea is worth uh, making. Now, uh, she's presenting on four skills, which uh, she's actually doing to prepare the the students to be globally competent, which the first one is creativity. And this is core. Secondly, is critical thinking. And this speaks to the code above. And uh, the third one is collaboration. 
where students need to collaborate to make impact within the world they live in. And last but not least is communication, because we all know that communication is key. We need to engage learners uh, in what they love to do, not in what is prepared for them to do. If they do what they love, they can take risks and lead to projects and be innovative. If they do what they love, they, they, they won't uh, fear failure because they will be engaged in the process of growing. And if they do what they love, they will then uh, make sure that, oh, then we will be sure of great leaders who will be uh, the change makers of tomorrow. In the social media platform, we have so many content creators where very few are using uh, that to benefit their brands. They have to be taught on how to build brands and protect it by understanding the laws of open education resources. They also need to take care and protect their digital footprint. And she's saying, thank you. That is Mukudu Machaba. And I hope if she was here, she was going to say a lot because I know her very well. And she's one of the most influential uh, teachers that I know. Uh, globally, not only in South Africa, but uh, globally at large. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to say that uh, that was uh, Mukudu Machaba's presentation. And as such, I would like to proceed to the other, uh, the other uh, speakers. And I hope that Mukudu Machaba at the end of the presentation, she, she can just join and greet you. Uh, before we end our session. And thank you very much, uh, Madam Mukudu. Uh, Madam Lekalakala, I'm not sure if you are here now because you got kicked out. Okay, I think she's still experiencing challenges. All right, uh, colleagues, let's proceed in that uh, regard. And now I would like to go to, uh, I think Taviso Matipa is also having network challenges. I don't know what is happening right here in South Africa today because uh, we are seeing a lot of challenges as far as network is concerned. All right, let me go to Meta Matlapu. Meta Matlapu, uh, she's a principal at SJ Van der Merve, full service technical high in Limpopo, South Africa. She's a 2021 She Hero National Teaching Award winner. She's a founder of Young Pioneer, uh, Young Pioneers, which is an NPO. She's a young tycoon champion uh, for 2005 and 2006. She's a Mama Bolo Second Newsletter founder uh, for 2009, 2010. She's also a 2015 ISPA Super Teacher of the Year, second runner up and 2006 young tycoon champions amongst others. So Madam Matlabu, uh, let me say the stage and the mic is yours. Please take us through. Thank you very much. I am really sorry. I'm driving. I thought I'll be the last person. I'm driving at the moment and I will be stopping. I set up my time to be half past four. I'm very sorry for that name. Yes, I think you can. You took me by surprise. I'm very sorry. You just took me by surprise. I, I know my time to be half past four. So I'm still driving. I was just listening to the presentation, but I'm, I'm arriving not long. All right. OK, so colleagues, uh, that is uh, Madam Matabu. And my apologies, because um. The other speakers are sending me text uh, saying that they're experiencing uh, network challenges. And my apologies for that because this is something that is beyond their control. But then I hope that sooner it will be fixed. So, and then one thing that I can uh, say again, colleagues, is that uh, these are some of the super teachers in South Africa and who are very influential globally. Uh, not only provincially or nationally, but globally at large. And that is why I saw it fit so that they can come here and speak to the students globally so that the students can be able to know what is it that actually is expected of them so that tomorrow they can be what we call 
uh, globally competent. Like I said in the beginning that we are living in a world whereby we are led by 20, uh, uh, 21st digi uh, digital skills, right? We are, we are in the fourth industrial revolution, let me put it like that, whereby the students need to be familiarized with uh, the, the world of technology because that is what is actually controlling the world now. And then I liked what uh, Mukudu said, uh, because she mentioned that we need to teach them in a way that they love. Why? Because now, uh, most of us were born uh, before technology, but I always advise the teachers to say, whenever they talk, they should never emphasize that they were born before technology, hence technology is it's difficult for them. Because we, 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 as teachers, we are lifelong learners. And as, as a lifelong learner, it means that you need to learn. Uh, you need to learn at all times. And as uh, times changes and as content changes, you need to be flexible as well, all right? So yes, they are here to speak to us so that globally we can know, uh, so that the, the, the students who are in Nigeria, the students who are in India, the students who are anywhere across the globe, they can know that if they can meet other students from another country, they will be able to compete with them themselves, right? And uh, one thing that I also love about the, 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 the speakers is that um, most of them, they are from South Africa and they are from rural. They are from rural, and I mean rural communities, whereby there is... Uh, the internet access is very weak, whereby the learners are from disadvantaged or uh, poor backgrounds, whereby most of them don't have smartphones. But these teachers, they always make sure that they go extra mile in making sure that uh, they, they achieve what they have to. And to also make sure that the students get what they want them to get at the end of the day. They don't use uh, excuses because excuses are always there. And I always uh, say to teachers that, it doesn't matter what you have, but if you want to achieve a certain outcome, you need to use what you have to get what you want. Because if you can await to get enough, it means that you might await forever until you pass on. So if you use what you have to get what you want, definitely it will also encourage you to do more than you ever thought. So um, colleagues, I'm not sure if MetaMatlab is now ready. Uh, Okay, I think she's still driving like she said. But Salo, I thank, I thank God for your courage. You have a very good uh, creative, creativity. Uh, God will want to empower you and endow you with a lot of knowledge. In respect of the, the shortcoming of some other speakers, uh, no problem. We will maybe some other time get ourselves prepared and uh, do a functional and a nice uh, presentation. But uh, we just thank God for today. You have tried. Uh, we have yeah. tried. Uh, you've tried a lot. Uh, yeah, uh, professor. Professor Emina, you need to give us a vote of thanks so that at least we call it today. <laughs> yeah. I think let's give Madam Matlabu just a minute. Um, hopefully, she'll be here. Or Mukudu, if maybe you can also come forth and just greet uh, the, the, the participants because uh, I delivered the presentation on your behalf. So if you can just say hi, and then I believe that will be outstanding. Okay, it's cool. I think Mukudu is still busy. Yeah, we are very busy. And one thing that also encourages me. Oh, uh, Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Time. Oh, yes, afternoon, uh, Madam Kudu. All right. I was still saying that um, what also encourages me and uh, uh, give me the, the courage is that um, in South Africa at the current moment, uh, we are in uh, school holidays. But these teachers, they always go extra mile. As you can see, they are all busy now, right? And uh, I know that uh, this might have taken them by surprise, the issue of network connectivity. But then one thing that I love is that they are all committed at, uh, as we speak at the current moment. And that definitely shows that they are too, very much uh, committed to, to what they do. And they also love what they do. Because one guy once said, if you love what you do, you'll definitely also do what you love. 
right? So, Madam Mukudu, yes, I can see you are here. Madam Mukudu, can you hear me? I just stole a little time. I think they are going to release me. Uh, but it was hectic here. I couldn't do my presentation. I'm very sorry about that. But luckily, I did my presentation and sent it to you on time. Thank you for hosting me once more. And thank you for all the participants. It was good seeing you here, all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tonya. And you are more than a welcome. Madam Matabu, if you are still driving, I think we'll have to call it off for today. Just advise me if you can hear me. Madam Matabu? All right. Okay. Professor Minas, do you want us to leave? <laughs> Give us both of thanks. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Uh, colleagues, uh, I believe um, this actually brings us to the end of our session. As you can see that uh, most of our uh, speakers they are having some uh, challenges as far as network is concerned. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your time. And I believe that uh, this has really impacted your life and uh, you'll never be the same person uh, again, because um, this way, some of the prominent speakers that uh, they, are, they, are, they are good at what they do. And like I said, uh, one speaker said that if you love what you do, you'll do what you love. And automatically, if you do what you love, also the results will also be positive. So let's stop uh, being negative. I know, yes, as teachers, at some point we have got challenges there and there as far as resources are concerned, but let's not, um, use that as, as a motive, I mean, as, as a, a, let's not take it negatively, but use it as a positive, and then definitely it will uh, in return uh, change our lives. So colleagues, uh, thank you very much. I believe we'll meet again uh, next time. And thank you to IIU for this uh, wonderful event. And thank you, Prof. Charles, for your time. I know you are always there to make sure that everything goes as you anticipate. Thank you very Thank much, you. everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Minas, you don't want us to leave? Thank you, Sir Charles. I want to congratulate you all. Great speeches, great presentation, a great session. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much. Global citizen means, like you say, Sir Charles, valuing and respecting human dignity and cultural diversity, as well as embracing the democratic culture and active citizenship. Global citizen needs to have a good knowledge based on global issues such as, as climate change, sustainable development, equality and conflict resolution. The school of the future should be better meet the needs of different types of students, uh, especially those in certain categories uh, discriminate. The evolution should be predominantly encouraging and assertive, never discouraged, never discouraged. Congratulations. You say all, all these words today. I just make a resume of your words. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you both. <laughs> wow. Good one. I you have been trying. I thank God for them. I go going to bless our peace, our co-founder and the CEO and CEO. They have been doing a lot of work for us. And God will come to expand him and expand every one of us that are faithful to the call. Thank you very much for this great opportunity. It's a pleasure. Salam, you have done a very good work. Uh, you have done a good work. Uh, we will we'll talk after this. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. you. God bless you all. Amen. <laughs> wow. Wow.